everybody, this is Eric Worre, and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. I'm here in Siesta Key, Florida, with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jeff Roberti. Um, I'm going to let him talk in a moment, but I will tell you, he's earned over $70 million in commissions um, in the network marketing profession, more than anybody I've ever known personally. And uh, he and I go way back, actually. Uh, we I was involved with a company that he's still involved with. I was involved way back in the 1980s, my very first experience. I moved on from there. He continued on uh, and, and uh, obviously had huge success. Well, we're at his home, one of his homes um, here in Florida. And, Jeff, thank you for being on and giving a little bit of your time. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for having me. Um, t- tell everybody your story because I, I, I continue to find it inspiring as a person, you know, kind of come from your background and, and uh, how you got started in the network marketing profession. Um, well, I guess my story is um, if I was going to share the, the, the story and how I got started, uh, I did not come from a wealthy family. I'm the oldest of three boys. Uh, my father had died at a, an early age, at the age of 46, and um, I was always a hard worker, you know, always had a really good work ethic, even growing up, you know, even 14 years old, had a lawn business in the neighborhood, mowing lawns in the mm-hmm. summer, and, you know, I worked construction and worked in the grocery store and worked as a waiter and cleaning up pools and just, and I was, was always the best at whatever I did. So when I got introduced to network marketing or having your own business or a home-based business, uh, I brought that work ethic with me. But, you know, I didn't have a higher education. Uh, I didn't have a lot of money. I didn't have a lot of experience, a lot of background in this type of business. But what I was lacking in those areas, I made up in in a willingness to work. You know, a burning desire, a willingness to work and being really teachable. You know, finding somebody that's hungry, that's dissatisfied. And I talk about, you know, people get started in this business sometimes out of inspiration or desperation. Mm-hmm. And for me, it was out of desperation. Uh, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. on my uh, Sick and tired of being behind on my bills in life, my promises in life, to myself, to my friends, to my family. And uh, I was looking for some things to change in my life and was very dissatisfied. So when I got introduced to uh, the opportunity, to the, I became a customer first, which, you know, really yeah. in this business, the first step is to become a satisfied customer, a raving fan customer, where you have that passion and that belief in your product or service. And then I found out there was an opportunity where an average person with an above average desire could earn an above average income. So I went to work on myself. Hmm. Um, I'll never forget, I, I came home after my first meeting, and you know how we all have a list of excuses? I had that list of excuses of, you know, the, the experience or the age. I was, you know, I was in my early 20s, yeah. you know, uh, no money, no experience, no background, but I made it up in some other areas. And I decided, look, you can make money or you can make excuses, but you can't make both. Hmm. In other words, I tore that list of excuses up, and I said, you know, Jim Rohn's right. For things to change, you've got to change. And for things to get better, you've got to get better. And uh, you can have more in life if you become more in life. And as you grow, your business grows. Mm-hmm. You know, this business is almost like a course in personal development disguised as a, as a business where you can go out there and, and grow and become more. And, and so I got off to a really fast start. Um, I understood what Zig said, you know, uh, you can have, uh, if you help enough other people get what they want in life, you can have everything you want in life. So uh, I got off to a really quick start, started sharing the product, sharing the opportunity, building a before, team. Before you go any farther, let me, let me just back up for a second, because there's, there's so many little gems in there, like little nuggets. And, and anybody who's ever watched any things that I've talked about, what do I always, have I always said, there are three elements that you have to have. A burning desire, a willingness to work, and being coachable. Guess where I got that? This guy right here. I've been repeating it for 20 plus years because it's the absolute truth. Sure. Uh, the one, one, the one thing uh, that I add to that sometimes is if you have a little bit of competitiveness. You know, what I mean, not to make somebody else lose, but to want to win, to to push yourself to be better. Um, 
when you got, how old were you when you got involved in the network? Um, well, I got first introduced at the age of 21. 21. And, and, and did you? You know, I'd like to say I was 12 when I got started. Since I've been <laughs> for 25 years. Well, now, I don't but, think I think yeah. you're you're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, you're the youngest guy I know that's made this kind of money in the network marketing profession. But but did you? When you first got started, did you feel insecure about talking to people? I, I want to talk to the young people out there for just a moment about just being 21 and talking to people who are older than you, maybe more successful than no, you. No, because... You were a waiter, right? Yeah, I was, I, was, I, was wait, I was waiting tables, and I was a very good waiter. I was the best waiter. Um, like I said, anything I did, I had a very good work ethic at it. And uh, I used my age as an advantage, not a disadvantage. Um, I was able to get into some doors and get some people's opinion. And, you know, I would always tell them, you know, some people that were older than me, you know, maybe connections to my, my family or, or people that I respected, I always tell them, look, I value your opinion. I respect you. I'm a young guy just getting started out in this, and I really would appreciate your, you know, your opinion. So on you used so the indirect approach, I, kind yeah, of built, I, built up their ego absolutely, a little bit. Absolutely, and it was a way to get into some doors in the very beginning with, yeah. with some people that maybe, you know, and I had no fear, you know, no fear of rejection, and you know, because I always tell people the longest journey in life from the head to the heart, once you get out of your head and it's not about me and you truly are going out there to serve and gift and pay, you know, put somebody's needs ahead of your own, now, the three things in business that I got very clear on early in the business is, one, it's about their needs, not your needs. So if you can go out there and provide something that meets that person's needs mm -hmm. and you can add massive value to their lives mm -hmm. and then you can create those raving fans, whether they're a customer of your product or service and or become a raving fan of your business and of you. Right. So... Um, you see, I, I see so many people, we talk about it a lot, actually, on this program, is they're, they're almost like predators. They're hunting for people to get in their group. They're predators to, like, try and capture somebody to be in their organization versus the mentality of giving, the mentality yeah. of making it about yeah. the other person. Well, I mean, you know, like, I, even when I start a new person up, but, you know, we, we're, it's not who can we sell. It's who can we share this with? Who can we gift this uh, we're putting together like our little memory jogger of list of people that you want to mm -hmm. share your, your product or your service with. You know, my attitude is, is this, the language, who do I love? Who do I care about? Who can I help? Mm. You know, instead of who can I sell it? You know, it's not the direct selling, it's the direct sharing industry. Right. And if you have that passion, that belief, that congruency, that conviction, it's not what you say, it's how you feel about what you say. People communicate more with feelings than they do words. So, and so, you know, when, when I came out of, out of, when I started sharing my, my, my product and my, and my opportunity, I had what you would call emotional sincerity. Mm. You know, it was from the heart. It was truly mm. going out there to serve and gift, and people could feel that. Yeah. You know, they could feel the fact that, wow, this guy really believes and is passionate about what, what he's sharing here, you know, this, this product or this or this service. And uh, that comes across with people, you know, when, yeah. they, when they really see that you've got, their, it, right? they, you've got their best interest at heart. Right. And, uh, you know, and it's just been going out and leading by example, you know. Well, before we get to leading by example, okay. I want to back up and dig into this a little okay. bit. Because everybody, as you get, you, you, you make this contact list. And you're always adding to this contact list. But I think what he said is so vitally important. And again, you're, you're learning some, some distinctions between somebody who's made $70 million in the, in, in the network marketing um, business and somebody who's made $100 that you might be listening to. Or somebody who's made no money, but they're your negative family member or whatever. Or you know, So pay attention to these little things because I'll tell you, for example, making the list and making the list of here's the people who I can recruit, here's the people who I can get, here's the people who I can sign up, versus who do I love? What were the three? Who do I care about? Who do I care who about? Can I help? Who can I, mean, I just, help? Just who difference. can I share this with? The, the difference emotionally is huge. And I think just by thinking that way, the way you're going to approach those people is completely different. Sure. Absolutely. Completely different. So, all right, so before we get into leading by, well, I guess we can talk about leading by example. I'm getting all fired up here. <laughs> um, leading by example, 
I've heard some things, some legendary things about you, that I don't know if are, are completely true, but I heard when you first got involved in the opportunity that you're with and you've been with for the last 24 years, that you made like a million phone calls. I mean, you're, every day you were just pounding it. You were hitting it hard. You were leading by example. You are doing things other people weren't willing to do. Long before it was fashionable in your company or, or anywhere, how did, you real, how did you launch? How did you really get it well, going? What did it take? Well, you know, my attitude is in life, watch the feet, not the lips. Um, distributors do what you do, not what you tell them to do. Hmm. In other words, would you follow you? Yeah. You know, your work ethic, your discipline, your consistency, your daily method of operation. You know, are you the type of person that you would follow mm -hmm. is a good place to start. So my attitude was that I was going to, I, once I signed up, I'm going to be the best distributor in my organization. I'm going to lead by example, you know, and, and, and not only tell people how to do the business, but show them, they'll try it, and they'll do it. Mm -hmm. So going out there and, and leading, not pushing. It's easier to lead than push. And setting the example, leading by example. So I got very clear in the, in the beginning in our business that we get paid, what you get paid for uh, is sharing the story, mm -hmm. telling the story, mm -hmm. sharing your product story, sharing your opportunity story, sharing your story. And, uh, you know, the company ships and manufactures and collects and accounts, and they've got their role. But what you and I, are, what this is all about is about relationships. This right. is relationship marketing, you know, multi-level network marketing, whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, long-term relationships equal long-term success. Hmm. So I got very clear also in the, in the beginning that there's this thing called safety in numbers. There's this thing called the law of averages. And I understood in the very beginning that, that if you talk to some people, you can make some money. If you talk to lots of people, you got an opportunity to become very wealthy. Yeah. Um, so instead of just going out there and setting some low standards, I said, well, you know, if it's two a day, what if I talk to 20 a day or, or beyond that? Yeah. You know, anything you do consistently over and over again, you get better and better at doing it. Yeah. Remember Jim Rohn sharing with me, he said, Jeff, a few simple disciplines done consistently over and over again equal multiple rewards. Right. And an example might be, let's say you talk to three people a day, and you do that for a few days, nothing much happens. But you do that for a few weeks, and then a few months, and then by the end of the year, you've talked to what, almost a thousand people? Right. Do you think you'd get better at telling the story? Absolutely. Do you think you'd start to come from more of a position of strength and have that voice of authority and that congruency and that conviction and that passion? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Do you think that maybe you'd have some momentum in your business? Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, maybe some of the people on your team would start doing the same thing. Right. And all of a sudden, you've got so much momentum going from doing it over and over again consistently that maybe sometimes the results you see this month is not a result of what you did this month. It's what you did last month right. or this year from last year. Right. Because you've got to have that consistency, mm. that discipline, mm. you know, that work ethic. You know, consistency of effort, work, work ethic, and attitude. Yeah. And uh, so I understood that, you know, there was, you know, it was, there was a bit of a numbers game. I under also understood, Eric, and this one might be priceless for people out there, you get paid just as much for a no as you do a yes. Yeah. And in the very beginning, I got clear on how do you overcome this fear of rejection? You know, where somebody tells you no, your product's no good, or your business, or you're no good. And, you know, how do you get past that? And sometimes, you know, if I ask people, do you have any negative family members out there? Yeah. You know, if you can get past your family, you can become a millionaire in this business. <laughs> my mom's still waiting for me to get a real job. But, you know, you're going to have some situations where people are going to poo-poo it. Right. You know, they're going to be negative. Well, it doesn't matter whether you buy their story you know, whether they, excuse me, whether they buy your story, what matters is whether you buy their story. Right. So let me just give you one example, one nugget here that maybe could help some people out there that could serve the, uh, the people that are listening. You get paid just as much for a, a no as you do a yes. 
What you really get paid for is telling the story. The sale is a result. The cause and what you really get paid for is consistently sharing that story. So let's take an example. Let's say you talk to 10 people a day. And out of the 10 a day, you get one yes. Well, that feels really good. How do you manage the other nine? The other nine knows. Well, instead of dividing the sale by one, what if you divided it by 10? And let's say on the one sale you made $50. And so now, how do you manage the other nine no's? Well, instead of dividing it by one, which is 50, for every person you talk to, it was worth what? $5. $5. Yeah. So let's say you're on the phone with someone, and you're sharing your product, or you're sharing your opportunity, and they say, you know, that product's no good, that business is no good, and you're no good, and you guys should all be thrown in jail. I'd say, thank you very much, I got your $5 anyway, and hang up the phone. Right? <laughs> right. Because it doesn't matter. Right. I understand that there's this thing called safety in numbers. There's the law of averages. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like a baseball player goes up to the plate. Mm -hmm. and he, swing, he gets paid for swinging the bat, right? right? And if you hit the ball, you strike out seven out of ten times. You hit the ball three out of ten times. Mm -hmm. Back 300. They pay you four million a year. Mm -hmm. You don't have to bat a thousand percent. Mm. So, you know, that, that just being able to get past that fear of rejection. I always tell people this. Say less to more mm -hmm. people. Don't worry about the ones you can't sell. Worry about the ones you can't see. Mm -hmm. There's this thing, I believe... Wait, say that again. Say that again. Don't worry about the ones you can't sell. Worry about all the ones you can't see. How many people are in the United States? 300 million. 300 million. But yet we tend to focus on the few that... The, you, know, you can't sell versus you can't see. In other yeah. words, get in front of some more and people, right? Eric, at the end of the day, come on. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Right. And you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Right. So, hey, it doesn't mean I don't care about somebody. I put. It's kind of like i got this big, long line of people from here to infinity. And if you're not interested, that's okay. Go ahead, back to the back of the line. I talk to the next person. Right. And I put them on what I might call my drip list. Yeah. Where I still drip on them. I still love them. I still care about them. Mm. But they just may not be ready. Right. So, you know, it's a series of exposures. You know, it's not right. an event. Right. You know, so the, the, it's a process. But I, you keep moving forward. Yeah. You know, you keep moving forward with, with your passion, your belief, your congruency, your conviction, your work ethic, your discipline, your leading. The number one reason people fail in this business is they start to listen to negative people. Mm -hmm. Number one reason. If you think about why somebody would quit. Great word to put in your vocabulary for those of you that are out there. Next. <laughs> Next. It's okay. If somebody doesn't want to do it. Next. Right. It's all right. It's okay to move on to the yeah. next person. Yeah. So, you know, I got clear on that in the very beginning. You know, and people could see, like, wow, this guy's coming from a position of strength. Really? He's got that, strong. that voice of authority. Like, he believes in what he's doing. There's it didn't matter that he was 24. It didn't matter he was 24. And you know what? You get a little bit better each day, each week, each month. You just, a day at a time, brick at a time. It's like building your business. Right. So um, that would probably be one of the biggest tips Numbers that I could... And and well, numbers, but, you know, when I find somebody, I yeah. mean, which could lead into the, the, the next segment is, it, when I find somebody that does say yes, yeah. well, then it's not, you go do it, let's do it together. Right. In other words, sign up here, win here, I believe in you. Yeah. And I take, hey, I'm very clear, life's not about me, life's about we. Right. Taking the spotlight off of you and shining it on someone else. Right. And you embrace that person and their contacts, your presentation, and you start chasing the business and help them experience success immediately by putting on some customers and starting to build up a team. And, you know, they start to grow. They start to become more. Right. You know, and you see that process and that you build that relationship. Right. And, you know, you get to a point where you've duplicated yourself. Yeah. And you don't stay in the management mode and keep working with that same person forever, right? right? You, then you go off and do it again. You keep right. stretching and stay in the recruiting and the building and the, and the building mode, right. you know, where you keep building new teams. Well, before we get into getting a person started, I want to talk because okay. where, where most of the pain is in network marketing, I think, 
is in the recruiting process. And a lot of them don't get the mindset that you get. <coughs> you know, what, what he just talked about is he had a burning desire, willingness to work. He was coachable. Um, he was willing to lead by example. He made his list, and he decided to make up in numbers whatever he lacked in skill, and he had his passion and all that stuff. Uh, how do you deal with, you know, when, when people say that they get, reje not rejection, but objections? They get objections, and people say, you know, hey, I'm not so sure if this works. And, you know, is your posture just so strong that you just kind of move on, or how do you deal with that? Well, I mean, you know, some of the things I just shared with you, um, as far as, you know, understanding that you're not going to bat a thousand percent. Yeah. Um, and the out of the head into the heart. Right. See, the fear of rejection to me is if I truly am coming from a servant's heart, if I've got that person's best interest at heart, if I'm there to serve them, if I'm there to gift them, if I'm there to, sh I'm a messenger, I understand I'm the messenger, not the message, then it's not about me. Once I take me out of the equation, and I truly believe that I'm there, my belief is that I'm there. To, it doesn't matter. You just it, kind of it doesn't. Really it doesn't matter. You know. All right. So and 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 that's where you got to get get strong is 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 understanding. You know, it's funny. You know, there's there's only about a dozen negative people out there. They just move you around. Know, they move around a lot. You know, like Jim would say. You know. So uh, you know, it's um, well, let's uh, let's talk. What are the things that you're so good at? I mean. You, what a lot of people do is they sign somebody up and then they wait for the business, right? They sign somebody up and then they wait for them to go to work. And what you've been so great at is you get people involved and then you, what you just said, you chase the business. You know, tell, show, try, do. I learned that from you too, is, is this process of quick results, getting them going, and they provide the people, you know, what, what Jeff told me way back. He said, Eric... You provide the people, we'll provide the presentation, you know, you just be a body dragger, drag some bodies in front of us and we'll be okay. So how does that all work? Well, you know, I, I talked to you about this earlier, yes, uh, uh, last night we talked yeah. about, you know, concepts are constant, techniques vary. Right. You know, the concepts, the, the, the fundamentals, the basics never change. Um, the different techniques, the different means and ways to tell the story, you know, whether it's, you know, person to person or a three-way call or CD or internet or home party or whatever it is. There's a lot of different means and ways. Sure. Um, when you bring a new person on into the business, um, it's a commitment. Mm. You know, it's equal commitment for equal commitment. You know, you make a move. Or I make a move, you make a move. Not I make two moves, you don't make any moves. Right. In other words, if you want this, I'll show you how to build your business. Right. You know, I'm here to, to focus. It's not I'm not giving to get. I'm not measuring what I'm getting in return. I'm not focused on my income. I'm focused on helping you get off to a fast start and all the focus on you. What, what kind of success you're having in the business. I've heard this from a lot of top leaders. They, they say, you know, look... I'm going to match your effort, and I'll even give you a little more than you give. But I'm not going to do it all. I'm not going to drag you over the finish line. You're going to have to take a step. Right. Well, it's, is that true? But yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not your upline's business. It's your business. At the end of the day, I want to take somebody where they become, you know, uh, a distributor becomes, number one, self-responsible, you know, self-disciplined, mm -hmm. self-motivated, mm -hmm. self mm -hmm. and ultimately self-functional. I want them to not, you know, I, don't, I want them to become independent. You know, uh, that's the greatest gift you can give somebody. You know, my sponsor quit my very first month in the business. Um, and love, you bad know. move. <laughs> bad, bad, bad yeah, move. Yeah, it's funny. People ask me, they say, you ever see him? I said, yeah, he was spotted somewhere not too long ago. A <laughs> sign on the, back, on the back side that says, kick me here. But Such he thought, a bad move. But wow. he thought the grass was greener on the other side of the fence. I went to another program and, you know, and, and uh, didn't realize that this 24-year-old ex-broke waiter that maybe – didn't look like he had a lot of potential or a lot of education or background or money. He had a lot of desire. He was willing to work and was teachable and uh, went out there and, wow. and got after it. So the, the, pretend that I'm a brand new person and you just sponsored me. What would you be telling me? And, and you know, what, what would be our 
our, I mean, our, our launch plan. <laughs> well, there's, there, there's some steps. I mean, you know, the, the first step is, and if you don't believe in the product, if you don't truly or believe in the product and become a customer, mm -hmm. raving fan customer of the product, there's really no step two. Yeah. Um, because we're going to build this on rock, not sand. Mm -hmm. We're going to build this on a solid foundation. So the first step, and you know, and that's why I say it's not the direct selling, it's the direct sharing. Because if you truly believe in it and you're passionate about the product, then it's, it's you know, you're, you're going out there and sharing the product, you're gifting it, you know, versus yeah. going out and feeling like you're trying to sell somebody right. the product. It's something you believe in, something that you're passionate about. But it's all about relationships. Hmm. Um, you know, we, we start to develop a relationship, and uh, I show you a few simple steps on how to get your business started. And, you know, we talk about these big incomes, and I never get into that with, with, with my new right, person. Sure, I understand. You know, we're, talking, to we're, we're talking about, you know, Eric, let me show you how you can get your product for free. You know, yeah. let's refer a few Little people. Steps. Some baby steps. Let me show you how you can get you up to 500 to to $1,000 a month. You know, the majority of the people on this planet, an extra five hundred to a thousand dollars a month yeah. is a life changer. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden saves their marriage, <laughs> their home, their car, I mean, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So it's some steps. And sometimes it's hard for somebody to believe more than two or three times what they, they've ever made in their life, more than double, you know, you start it's, it's yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, there's the potential to, to become financially independent in our business. Absolutely. I tell people, hey, you give me three to five years, you give me three to five years, I'll show you how to compress a lifetime worth of work in what we do in the next three to five years. You'll, that look, you, that kind of you'll, look, you'll look back and say this was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. Signing up with you, Jeff Roberti, here in Sarasota, Florida, Jumping into, you know, my product is Juice Plus. Yep. I'm passionate about health. I think there's a huge need out there for health. Yep. Um, and just as there is much of a need for prosperity and wealth with all the confusion and, and uncertainty out there right now. You know, our business is very attractive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the magic of part-time where you can start a part-time home-based business, flexible hours, low investment, low fixed overhead, you know, part-time, immediate income, be able to expand your business not only in this country, but the 20-plus countries we're doing business in, and I'll show you how you can get it started. You see how he's planting yeah. all these visual images yeah, but, and how but, he's really helping? Yeah, but here's, here's understand this. I right? love the magic of yeah. part-time. Part-time magic. I love that. You know, and, it, and it, there's something exciting about, you know, when you got a little part-time but business going on here, that's why you see a lot of women come into our business. Mm. Because, you know, their spiritual life, their family life is their priority. And then if they can have a part-time business that they can start out of their home and network and share something that they believe in, yeah. a lot of times, you know, the guy at first will be like, well, that's her business. Right. Starts yeah. having a little success. Well, it's our business. And then once it's successful, my idea, right? My business. <laughs> but that's, you kind of see that happen, especially in our Juice Plus world. Mm, yeah. You know, we have a lot of the women that really drive it because they're health conscious and, you know, we've got this program for the children. And, I mean, right. you know, whole foods and fruits and vegetables just makes good sense. Yeah. And um, so the magic of part time, this idea of planting the seed that part time's not a silly thing, it's a smart thing, but it's an exciting yeah, thing, yeah. it's a fun thing. And the other thing is, Eric, is this I like to under promise and over deliver. Hmm. You know, if network marketing has a bad reputation, Stop it's that. because people they, they put these false, these unrealistic expectations out there. Hmm. You know, I, had, I worked extremely hard building my business in 20 plus countries to have this type of residual income. It didn't happen overnight, right. you know, but I also understood that if I was consistent long enough and invested back into my business and back into people and kept building, kept staying in the recruiting mode, there was an opportunity to take it from part time to full time to lifetime to, you know, uh, you know, your career. Yeah. And, um, Part time I mean, to full time to, to life lifetime. Time. I mean, it's just it's you know, and it's like people say, you know, Jeff, why are you still so passionate about this today? Why are you? I was just over <laughs> in Munich, Germany, with five thousand people, and did another talk out in Los Angeles with over five thousand back to back conferences, and you just put together another big tour that I'm getting ready to do over in Europe, mm. and it's because you know, there's this thing, Eric, called the the you know the the, the science 
of achievement, mm -hmm. you know, that part of it. Mm -hmm. But there's also this part of it called the art of fulfillment. Mm. You know, success without fulfillment is failure. Wow. And, you know, people say, well, why are you still doing this today? Hey, when you love what you do and you get to add value to people's lives, there's nothing more rewarding than that. I sit in the front row at our conferences 20, almost 25 years. This January will be my 25th year. And I'm up in the front row of my journal taking notes like it was day one. Mm. And I hear new people come across the stage that have gotten up to our top position marketing director. And it's not the position, it's not the money, it's who they've become. Wow. And you see some of the adversities and challenges and the growth, and you, and you see this this person up there that maybe you played a small part in that. Sure. You know, you believed in them maybe even more than they believed in them themselves. Yeah. And you see them share their story and come up off the stage and all the hugs and kisses and pictures and flowers. It's like, you know, so our business is so rich in relationships, so rich in love and connection, in growth and contribution and making a difference and making an impact. But I sit there and I hear these stories and I'm moved emotionally. Yeah. And I'm sitting there in tears half the time when I hear these, the, when they're sharing up there. Yeah. And, you know, there's, so there's a lot of emotional revenue. There's a lot of spiritual revenue. There's, our business is rich in, in meaning and purpose and fulfillment. You yeah. know, they're just beyond just you, you the, were talking the, the money, you know. Yeah. Like, today I do it totally out of inspiration. Yeah, well, talk, talk about that. Because last night we were talking about how your your reasons have, have evolved well, the over one, the years. Well, so, you know, know, from a young man well, to, to today. Sure. Well, maybe this where did it start and how did it, you well, know, where did it go? Well, maybe this would be a good message for some of the other leaders out there. You know, once you build up your business and you get the, the residual income and, you know, and you get to a point where you really don't have to go out there and work it like you did in the beginning. It's, yeah. You get paid. I love part I love about it is you get paid tomorrow off of what you did yesterday. Yeah. You know, that word residual income uh, is, is great, but it can also be a double-edged sword. Hmm. Because if you stop growing, you know, the law of the universe, all things either grow or they die. Yeah. You either contribute or you, or you either grow or you die. You're either climbing or you're either sliding. And it's just like contribution. Either you contribute or you're eliminated. Hmm. You know, Tony Robbins, one of my mentors, talks about a thing called CANI, C-A-N-I. It's called constant and never-ending improvement. You know, where you grow in all areas of your life. Mm -hmm. You know, how's your financial mastery, your relationship mastery, your spiritual mastery, your physical mastery, your emotional mastery? Constant and never-ending improvement. That's why I joined his Platinum Club and have Tony as one of my mentors and, yeah. and, and, and immerse myself in that learning environment. But, you know, the for me to, to keep doing the business today is a chance to pay it forward. I'll never forget when I filled out my application and what it meant to me. And when I went to my very first meeting, and I remember driving home in the car, and I didn't have the money for the hotel or the plane, and I was here in Florida, and it was up in North Carolina. And, you, know, and you, you know, you do what you got to do to make it work. And I remember driving home in the car, and I had the radio on, and I was thanking God for answering my prayers. Wow. There was tears of joy coming down as I was driving home. And like, wow, this is your chance. This is a chance for you to become more and have more and to you know and, and your success, your income. Really when I look at my, my income, it's a measuring stick. Yeah. The more lives I've touched, the bigger impact I've had, the bigger difference I've made, that shows up in that check. Because the only mm -hmm. way you're successful is if you help other people. Mm -hmm. You know, they're getting the, the, the results. See, they're yeah. getting value. Their needs are being met. Right. So today I decided, well, years ago, I decided to retire into my business instead of from my business. Yeah, because you retired retire from your business a long time ago. A long time ago. And um, you know, so, so, for, so maybe the other leaders that are out there is you've got to evolve your why. You know, my why today is about inspiration. It's about, you know, that brand new person that's just filling out their application. It's their grand opening. It's their launch of their business. And, you know, I might, the product that I share is Juice Plus, mm -hmm. you know, but what I really market is hope. Hmm. 
I market hope. I market opportunity. I market dreams. Sign here. Win here. I believe in you. And, you know, sometimes you turn on CNN, constant negative news, and right. you can just live in fear, paralyze yourself, watching all the negative stuff that's out there, the doom and gloom, and I show up with as a breath of fresh air saying, hey, here's a product that can make a huge impact on your health, mm -hmm. and here's an opportunity for what another need that's out there, which is wealth, prosperity. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm marketing. I'm just as passionate about the opportunity as I am the product yeah. with people. So, so I, it's a, the thing that just inspires me. So I, I come here last night. We're hanging out and, and uh, you know, take a look at the house. We go to dinner and all this stuff. And he's just as excited <laughs> today than 20 years ago. Coming, you know, when, when I was spending time with him, trying to learn from him, coming to, he'd come to my, you know, our little office that we had in Minneapolis, and he was just as passionate then as he is today. He would just literally go out there and say, you can change your life right now. And, he, you know, he, he, he's, he's getting me, like, all fired up, ready to get involved in the profession all over again last night because, you know, for, and he's telling these stories, and we had this dinner with this great couple that, you know, they've achieved financial independence, this great family, um, you know, that uh, they live in Spain now but from Germany, and, and it's so fun. T tell everybody about the importance of stories. The importance of stories. Well, how, how important are stories uh, in what we do? Yeah, well, it's it's almost like you're a you're a paid storyteller. Hmm. You know, um, I've always been the type of person. You know, you sell results, not ingredients. And uh, just like your personal story, as far as what the product means to you, and your personal story, as far as what the business has meant to you. But I also love to share stories of others. Hmm. You know, other people that have gotten involved and what the product has meant, what the opportunity has meant. So, uh, you, know, our, it, you know, if I was really going to summarize our business, it, it would be this. Grow me, serve you. Hmm. You know, as you grow, your business grows. And if your focus is on serving others, like I said at the beginning, and I got this from Tony, you talked about, you know, where you're putting their needs ahead of your own. You know, you're not giving to get. You're not measuring what you get in return. You're truly there to, to put that person's needs ahead of yours. Mm. Number two, you're there to add massive value to their lives, you know, providing that value. And number three, creating that raving fan, building that relationship, that long-term relationship. And you know, I always joke with people. I say, you know, i got two hobbies in the business, collecting friends and collecting money. And you should see the collection. <laughs> you know, that's because that's what it's all about. You know, the more friends. I mean, some of my best friends <coughs> in the world are people that I've shared the product with and the opportunity with, and the relationships that are just just in, invaluable. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question about um, what you share first, because there's a debate I think out there in the network marketing profession. I want you to understand. He has a million people in his organization on a monthly auto show. A million people using the products on a monthly basis. Amazing, unbelievable legacy. But some people say you need to leave with the opportunity because, you know, then they'll use the product as a byproduct of the opportunity. Other people say, no, 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 you need to leave with the product, you know, because they've got to be a product of the product first, and then you can share the opportunity that's involved with the product. Yeah. What's your opinion? Well, first of all, I want to correct you on the million. Okay. Um, our, our company has over a million okay. that are on auto ship, and I have, a, I have a little piece of that pie. I mean, I'm pretty proud of the role I played in that, but, okay. you know, one of the things I like to be is factual. I understand. And, I understand. Um, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, Jay Martin, another one of my mentors. Yeah. Um, you know, Jay's just a brilliant man, the president and founder of NSA, and, um, you know, one of the things that I so much admire about him is his leadership and his wisdom, and, and I just have so much admiration and respect for the man. And I was very fortunate, actually, 25 years ago to find this company. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes in our industry, you know, our, some of these companies are here today go. and gone tomorrow. And, you know, Jay's weathered the time here of, you know, four or five different great product launches over the years and 40-plus years and yep. billions of dollars in sales. But, you know, Jay is, is a believer with, with our product that, you know, to, to lead with the product. 
And there's a lot of merit and a lot of wisdom in that because, you know, if you're just talking about the business, if I'm just leading with the business, it really doesn't make sense if you're not a product of the product. Hmm. If you don't believe in the product yourself, then how could you possibly go out there and share something with someone that you're not a passionate about yourself? Yeah. So I'm okay with... You know, once I've shared with you the product story when I was talking to you last night yeah. about the importance of whole food. You should see him. He's like a little kid. He's running around. Here's a, here's a bag of this. And here's a, here's a, well, try one of these. Right. Try it. Try but what it. I was telling you about it, here's, here's a simple, things, fire it up. simple concept. You know, right, right. Here's what we should eat when it comes to fruits and vegetables. Here's what we do eat. Right. And juice plus bridges that gap. Right. Now, could I talk to you also then about if that makes sense to you, whole food nutrition, yeah, right, right. That, that I could... I, would, could that make sense to you then to say, well, okay, well, Eric, I can show you a way. Or what if I could show you a way where not only you could make this impact on your health of, of yourself and your family, but people that you love and people that you care about. Or, you know, I could ask a series of questions yeah. and get into what needs you're really looking for. Right. You know, so I can introduce the opportunity to somebody, but the product's still got to come first. You yeah. understand that? Mm -hmm. There's there, there's no no deal if, if you don't get on the product and get on the auto ship and start taking the product and become as passionate about the product because you've got to have that. If it, if it, if not, it's built on sand. If some of these programs out there, you know, it's you know you. they're just a bunch of programs. It's an excuse. It's just an excuse. And you know, we made our mistakes. I've I've been involved in that before. We've made our mistakes in the past, but. For the you know, last 20 years, we've been out there building something where, you know, 90% of our sales are people that just take the product. Right. They're on auto ship because the product stands on its own. Right. You, know, I might have a million, you might have over a million customers, but, you know, 10% of those, 100,000 of them, have become distributors, representatives, started their own home-based business because they love the product. So about 90%. And it's, and it's not a, and, and here's how I, what I tell people. When you know what you know, it's not an opportunity, it's a responsibility. Hmm. How could you not, how could I not go out there and share this, this product or this opportunity with you? Once you know it. Once I know it. So my belief, the meaning I give it is so different. And because you guys lead with with the product and get people raving. I love the word raving fans. I've read the book, but I've never sure. attached that. Uh, raving fans, you create these raving fan distributors and raving fan customers. Nine, is, is it true? Approximately ninety yeah. percent of the users are just in not consumer. distributors, just in consumers. They're just consumers, They're, which is what that what that says is if in the profession you have a product that will stand without the op financial opportunity attached, that people will use it regardless of whether or not they're getting commissions. What I what I've told people is I think people stay on auto ship for four reasons in network marketing. One, they're making money. Two, they have the hope of making money. Three, the culture is so strong that if they don't do it, they don't feel like they're part of the group. And four, the product stands on its own. And I think the, the network marketing profession has gotten lazy, especially in the last ten years, and they've relied on the first three way too much. Sure. And not enough on the fourth. And the fourth takes some patience. Sure. People are chasing around these little cocaine deals. Hey, I, I, you know, I've got to make a, you know a million dollars in my first month, so they they bounce from deal to deal to deal. What would you say to those friends? You know, because we both have friends in the profession that have kind of gotten lost in the in the bouncing around to chase the dollar <clears throat> thing. Well, I think if. Um you look at the the S curve, and you know, the, you know there's the innovation stage, and then there's you know the, the the growth stage, and then there's the maturity stage. And everybody feels like they got to get in in the very beginning. You know, well that's not true. Right. When I got involved with NSA, they had already been out there for almost 20 years. Mm. You know, so it was a solid company with solid management. They're ready know. for wave two, kind of. You know, so they were still like even right now where we're at, we we have like you know still even less than five percent saturation mm -hmm. as far as penetration of the market. So we're just getting ready to go into that growth stage, and we've been out there for almost twenty years mm -hmm. um, with the with the product. So sometimes you feel like you got to be the first one in and get into a new deal, and you know, and you kind of jump from deal to deal, and you know that's not how it works. You got to find something. First of all, you got to find a product or a service that you truly believe in yourself. 
And then you've got to find some leadership, the people that are running the company, you know, that have a long-term vision, a long-term plan, mm -hmm. like I found with Jay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then a system that is duplicatable, you know, where new people come in and they're having success, you know, not just the people at the top. Right. And, uh, you know, and then you got to stick with it, you know. It's not just jumping around and, you know, from deal to deal and, you know, trying to – most – my, the people in my business are not network marketing pros or, you know, right. they're stay-at-home moms. They're healthcare professionals that mm -hmm. believe in whole food nutrition, you know. So I'm building it with, you know, people that say, hey, I love this product. I'm passionate. You know you've got a good business. Here's how I know I've built this mm -hmm. thing on a solid foundation. You know you've got a good business when you can't screw up your own business. Yeah. Even if I left, everybody would still stay. <laughs> is it just lost his mind? He's he's crazy. Crazy. What is he doing over there? <laughs> I mean, did he drink the Kool-Aid or something? I mean, what's going on with this That's guy? You do know you got to get it. You know, so it's solid. So, you you know, it, it takes some time. It takes that, that, that pig-headed discipline, that consistency, mm -hmm. you know, where you just got to do it consistently day in and day out. It's like putting one foot in front of the other. Going from point A to point B. Right. And I'm also very clear, you know, uh, one of my mentors, a guy named Larry, Larry Thompson, you know, he talked about, you know, he said, you know, Jeff, the majority of the people are just going to be users. Yeah. You know, 80, 85 percent, you know, they're just going to do it part time and sometime and, you know, and that's okay and, and that's fine. But you get that, you know, that 10 percent or that 5 percent or that 2 percent mm -hmm. that really want it. And that's the ones you really lock in with and, and build some teams with. Yeah. You know, like the Vim and Birga Plunga you yeah, met yeah. last night. You know, I've taken my business, you know, not only did I build it here in the United States, but I've gone to 20 plus countries. Right. And always kept building, always kept recruiting, staying in the, the building mode and went and got out of my comfort zone and into some uncharted waters. Right. 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 And, you know, the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. You know, some of these countries were not easy to open, right. but I understood that there was huge rewards right. if you could figure that out. And uh, it's just been very rewarding. So, uh, so yeah. on, a, on a lot of levels, you know, emotionally yeah. and spiritually and, and, like I said, with with just the, the relationships and, the, and continuing to grow and serve. Yeah. Well, talk to me about time management for a moment. Okay. At uh, the very beginning... It, it, you know, if you're going to recommend to somebody for their first year or two or whatever, what percentage of their time should be talking to new people, to talking to prospects, versus how much of their time working with their group? What percentage do you think? Well, you're always talking to, to new people. I mean, well, that's, whether, not, that's not what everybody does. But uh, I mean, there's well, different well, stages, well, right? Well, well, that's you know, there's you know, there's four stages. There's okay. the there's the production stage. Then there's what I would call the management stage, and then you know, then there's the overseer. You kind of oversee the managers that manage the producers, and then there's the overseer of the overseers, <laughs> right. you know, that are overseeing the overseers to make sure they're managing the producers and doing their job. Right. Well, when you get into that overseer position, and all you're doing is dealing with problems and managing and overseeing people, then the business is, you know, it starts to become stressful, and you need a break, and I need a time out. And it's no longer fun. Mm. If you want to get back into the fun, the juice of the business, that's getting back into the production phase. So where you produce, where you're where you're putting on new business. You got that new baby distributor, you know, they got a good positive attitude and a fresh warm market. And sometimes it's easier to give birth than raise the dead. <laughs> Instead of trying to whip that dead horse they don't want it anymore, it's okay. You know, they're going to do what they're going to do. Why not go out and get somebody that wants it, that's got some desire, that's got some hunger, right. and put on that new front line? Here's my advice to some of you that have been out there for a while. If your business is flattened out or it's stagnant, go back out and do what you did in the beginning that got you to that top position in your company. Go back into the recruiting, the production, the building phase. Go back out there and put on. Nothing will ignite your business more than putting on five new front lines. Mm -hmm. You know, and working with a new team. And you know what it'll do for your group? It'll inspire them mm -hmm. because they'll say, "Well, look at Jeff. He's out there." You know, they, at first, they might be like, "Well, hey, you're not focusing on me, and I'm not the issue anymore. You're not going to just spend all your time here managing me." And you start putting on some new business, yeah. all of a sudden you you get after it. 
they start to see that, and then they some of them start to get inspired by that. I remember you, you said you were always saying, "Catch me if you can." I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be bringing in some extra people. Catch me if you can. Come on, because it was inspiring to me. I was like, "Dang, I'm gonna get left behind." He's just gonna keep going. He's just not gonna stop. I mean, I think. Would you say that one of your secrets has been you stay more consistent in production mode? Than other people. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, and that's and, and that that production mode could be if you're my new, my, yeah, my, my new my new. You're new, driving it. You're trying to. I'm, I'm chasing it through your business. Yeah. You know, I'm. You, you know, whether in front of people. You know, I always shoot. I always joke also too. Another maybe the, the, the the lesson I could share with people is what we call the three foot rule. I don't know if you've heard of the three oh, foot yeah, rule. Yeah, yeah. You know, somebody gets in within three feet of you. You gotta tell the story. You talk to them. Right. You know, you make a connection. You build some rapport. Hey, turn off your phone. You know, get off your Crackberry or your iPod or iPhone or whatever you're on. And talk to the person next to you. Right. You know, put a smile on your face. Right. Uh, you know, right. say hello to meet somebody. You know, ask a question. Make a friend. Instead of going to a meal or having, having a meal at a restaurant, how about making a connection with that waiter? You right. know, there might be some waiters out there that... Make you a lot of money in this business. I, I don't know, but you know whether so. It's whether it's the bellman or the the, the, the driver or the the waiter or whoever it is. I'm always I'm a team player. Mm. I make everyone part of my team. Mm-hmm. You know, making friends, collecting those friends, building those new relationships. And once I you, you could drop me literally, Eric, out of an airplane. You know, with a parachute, hopefully, and a backpack, maybe with some products and a few brochures. Landy anywhere in the world, and within 90 days I can have a thriving business and not know a soul there. Right. Because I would create a warm market. Right. You know, and once I found somebody, then I chase their contacts, right? And then those people know people, and then they know people, so it just starts to expand. Mm-hmm. So uh, the three-foot rule, we say, you know, if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Right. Lighten up and your sales will brighten up. <laughs> you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta have a little fun with this thing. You know, it's, you can't get too serious. I, I you know, it's, you know, it's just we 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 joke about it. You know, we go around. You know, we're just yeah. we're having fun, and we're, we we just almost make it like a game. Like we're yeah. just we're having fun talking to people. And, you know, and sometimes I'll pull the waiter off to the side and say, hey, "I have a gift for you tonight. Something I want to share yeah. with you." Yeah. And I'll share it with them. Right. I don't try and make a spectacle out of it in front right. of the table. Right, right. You know, but making that rapport, making that connection with somebody. There was a time when I, <laughs> I, uh, I was really wanting success, and I was dealing with my own stuff. I was growing me. I was a young man. He was also a young man, but he was like this rock star already. And he was going to be doing an event in Detroit, Michigan. Hmm. And uh, he had a new line going there, and he was chasing the business with this new line. And I said, I called him up, and he was like eight levels above me or something. I said, Jeff, yeah, uh, I, somehow somebody gave me your phone number or whatever, and I ended up uh, getting you on the phone, which I was grateful for. And I said, Jeff, if I come to Detroit, can I just watch you? Um, and you're like, oh, you know, I could tell. You know, it's just like you probably get that quite a bit. Um, and I've had tons of people ask me, can I just watch what you do in a day? Um, so I, I got in the car, and you said, sure. So I got in the car and I drove over and I and I slept in my car. I, I didn't have enough money to stay in the hotel where you were staying and been there. doing your presentations. Sleeping in the car, doing the presentations, and and uh, so I'm hanging out with you. And a couple of things that I learned from this was really interesting. One is one one joke you told. He said, "Eric, did you hear?" I said, "What?" He, he said, "I won the lottery." I said, "No." He said, "Yeah, really?" I said, "No, get out of here." He said, "No, no." I said. I can't believe it. He said, yeah, network marketing. I won the lottery, man. I get paid every single month, but it's just not for, you know, a 10-year buyout. It's a lifetime. I'm like, <laughs> so, yeah, you probably don't remember this, right? So, the other thing, the other thing is, is um, I watched him do presentations. He was chasing the business, and, the, and his new line there was just putting people in front of him. And he did the presentation, and you know what? It was the same. Over and over and over and over. He'd tell the same story. He'd tell the same joke. He'd introduce it exactly the same way. He would do the compensation plan literally almost word for word. Same pause, same inflection in his voice. I watched him do it 10 times, 15 times, 20 times over the course of three days. And I was just stunned. And it was so fun. Um, I did a little homework, went onto your website and stuff. I'm listening to some conference calls. I'm listening to do the presentation. 
and it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. I mean, he added a few things, just a few words, but the same. The reason why I got such a big smile on my face as I'm watching this is I'm listening to all the stuff that brought me up for things to change. You got to change. You got to strike while the iron's hot. You know, it's not about me. It's about we. All these different things that he's just lived these concepts. And so, you know, so the consistency. Uh, I see. I see so many people, including myself. I, you get bored with your own presentation. So because you're bored with it, you start tinkering with it. It starts to become this monstrosity. Versus remembering it's about that new prospect. Sure. And, and what did you tell me last night? It's easier to get a new audience than it is to get a new presentation. So focus on the people you can't see and tell a new story versus trying to entertain the few people that, you know, you're too lazy to get around. You know what I mean? So anyway, it's, 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 it's been inspiring to me for a long, long time. But talk about... Just this consistency thing. I mean, as far as doing the presentation. Do some people say, you know, well, hey, give me a different presentation every once in a while? Um, you know, I'm, I'm always growing. Yeah. And I'm always, um, you know, I, I, I'm a true believer that, um, you know, today you're the student, tomorrow you're the teacher. And I'm always immersing myself in a learning environment and growing and taking notes um, Talk about that because he's been around. He's made more money than anybody. He's sitting in the front row yeah, well, at events. Well, I take, and you're always taking notes. Well, he's I, got his journal stacked well, here. Here's, in front. here's an example. I use a journal, and um, you know, if you look in my journal, I've got things you know highlighted in there after I've taken my notes. But you know, I'm I'm, I'm a, I take notes. You know, short pencil is better than a long memory. First mm. of all, mm. and it's not when you remember; it's when you can't forget. And I take notes not as if I'm only taking notes for myself, but as if I'm going to teach this to someone. The fastest path to mastery is not only to apply it and integrate it into your to your life, but to teach it, to mm -hmm. share it. Mm -hmm. So uh, my presentation, the basics, the fundamentals of what our business is all about, that doesn't change. You know, like I said, concepts are constant. Techniques vary. There's different means and ways. So, yeah, it, it's easier to get a new audience than it is a, a new presentation. I mean, when you've got something that works, keep it simple. Keep it, you know, duplicatable. You know, you don't want to get too high tech with, you know, with what you're doing. I mean, I love the fact we got one product, one price, one story, one simple message, and it's very duplicatable. But, you know, as far as taking some new information and growing as a leader, growing sure, as a person, sure, sure. then I've got material <laughs> that I might sit down with my leadership team or some yeah. people that are up and coming and talk about to them about some of these things that I've learned and then and in some of these different things that I've, I've taken notes on. So I'm always constantly growing. Right. No, I'm, I'm not saying yeah. you're not growing, but I will, will tell you the presentation. He got to be, I wanted the results that he had. So what I did way back then... With a boom box, is I recorded your presentation, I transcribed it word for word on a legal pad. Every single word, every joke, every story, every everything. I recorded my own voice into the tape recorder, listened to it, was just mortified because it sounded so terrible, no energy, no you know, excitement, anything. I did it like five, six times until I got kinda got it. And I put it in my car and I listened to it a thousand times until I could do it in my sleep. Right. You know what I mean? That's what sometimes what you do. You just learn the presentation and get it to your subconscious level and then just go. You know, where's the new person I can tell the story to? Um, I was looking at your journal there and some, you know, so many great little concepts that you had in there. Um, the, the Talk about personal growth. Talk about personal development. How important is that for you and how, do you think, how important is that, do you think, to the network marketing profession? Um. You know, there's a handful of things I do consistently every day. Mm. Uh, number one is I, I share my product. You share your opportunity. You build relationships. You know, the fortune is in the follow-up. Mm -hmm. um, you build for events, you know, one event to the next. And then you learn how to master big and pending events. Like when we have a conference, a convention, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer to invest back into your business and get people to the big events. Mm -hmm. Count the calendar down going into the, the days right into the big conference and load up the dance with a freshman class and light them up and see mm -hmm. them all going home with that. I want to talk about that. Light in their eyes. Yeah. But the, uh, the other thing is personal development. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, what books are you reading? Uh, what are you listening to uh, consistently every day? You know, different CDs or, you know, different things that you're feeding your mind with. Who are you spending time with? Mm. You know, who you spend time with is who you become. Mm -hmm. You know, you, know, you want to make sure that, you know, you love your family but choose your friends. Yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes you'll be, great, able, great you know, I mean, you, you, you got a chance here to, be, you know, that selection process of who you're going to spend time with, that mm -hmm. peer group, mm -hmm. you know, what level they play at, mm -hmm. what standards they mm -hmm. have. It's one of the things I like about Tony's Platinum Club. Mm -hmm. is I'm around a peer group there at learning environment yeah. where everybody helps their game. Um, but personal development, you know, the three things I do consistently every day is feed the mind, condition the body, and connect spiritually. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, those are the rituals, yeah. you know, the habits. Yeah. Your habits, your rituals, you know, what you do consistently yeah. every day is very important. So personal growth, and, personal development. And, I mean, and, I, I think I said it earlier, you know, grow me, serve you. Yeah, as, I love that. As, grow as, me, as, serve as, you. As, you're, as, as you grow, your business grows. Yeah. And, you know, you inspire people. You mm -hmm. know, are you the type of person that, that's inspiring to be around? Yeah. You know, success breeds success. Right. You know, and uh, sometimes I'm around people and they're like, Jeff, if it's half as good as you make it sound, I want you. I'm just, <laughs> just being around you, that energy, that passion, right, right. that enthusiasm, you know, just, yeah. you know, just that belief, that emotional sincerity. Sure. You know, that you have. So, uh, okay. well, let, let, me, let me transition that to this. We were talking last night and I said, you know, some people are, you know, they, they, their personal development is more oriented towards books. Some people it's more into towards listening, audio programs. Some it's live events. You're a kind of a live event, experiential learner, don't you think? Kind of a yeah, live? I'm more auditory, more visual. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, one of the things that you are so good at, and you taught me to be fairly good at, you know, not as good as you, but fairly good at, is to build towards events. Mm -hmm. so especially the big destination events where somebody's mm -hmm. got to get out of their little sure. cocoon and they've got to travel someplace, they've got to sacrifice, they've got to figure out a way and then for a weekend they'll think about the possibilities in their life and they'll start to dream and they'll meet other people. Um, how important are these big events that you that you build towards? Um, so a couple, couple questions I'll let you go sure. you know, kind of go on. How important are they? All right. um, how do you build towards them? Mm -hmm. Uh, and how do you teach others how to build sure, towards sure. Well, I'll just kind of summarize it for you. Um, you know, like I said, I have my DMO, my daily method of operation of things I do consistently every day. Right. You know, sharing the product, sharing the opportunity, building the relationships, the, you know, building from one small event to the next. And you, get, you build what's called momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, momentum is a funny thing. I mean, yeah. when you've got momentum going, it's great. But it takes some time to get that momentum going. You know, so if you're doing something consistently long enough and you've got enough people in that, that pool of people that you've shared this with, as you build towards your big conference, now you've got a group, you've got some momentum, a group of people that you can pull into the big event. Even when I didn't have the money, Eric, I invested back into my business. Yeah. You know, whether it was meeting somebody part of the way, you know, I'll get you a conference ticket or you know, split a room with you or whatever it is. Yeah. You know, you, you, you figure that part out yourself. But putting it back in, investing back into your business, investing back into people. Well, the big, the big thing that I think is different here is <clears throat> what a lot of people do is they, they go through this phase. Phase one is they go if they're a distributor and, you know, they can plan it and figure it out and they're kind of sensible about it and they, they go. And then two is they, they build a little team and then they try and get their team to go. And they slowly build that way. Um, what you've done from the beginning, from the beginning, is you've made the big events about your prospects, about not just people on your team, not just distributors. Right. Right. You've always made it about prospects and, like you say, that freshman team. Mm -hmm. You're always focused on, here's the class of 2011 yeah. that's coming into this new event. It's not about bringing in, you know, everybody else. We want them to come, too. Sure. But you're going to lead by example because on the front row there's going to be you and a bunch of guests and a bunch of, you know, sure. freshman team. So that's a different philosophy for people. And people go, really? I can bring prospects right. to my big event? 
How how valuable has that been to your career? Well, getting people to a, you know prospects yeah, or, or yeah. brand new people to a big event. Yeah, I mean it's just you know they it it's an experience where you know it, it doesn't work all the time. <laughs> no, of course. But uh, when somebody comes and they spend those two or three days and and see that big picture, like you met Vim and Birgit last night, they leave there where they. <laughs> They're flying so high they don't need the plane to get home. Mm-hmm. They've, 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 they've seen it. They've felt it. They've experienced it. So, you know, the, the, the big conferences, the big events are a must. Like I said, they're just non-negotiable. And, you know, and, and the people see me, and like I said, it's easier to lead than it is to push. Right. And if people see you leading, then you're showing up with a new freshman class of mm. baby distributors that are excited and and enthusiastic, and it's all new for them. And you know, and you're there taking notes, and it's like your very first conference, right. and you're laughing, and you're crying, and you're playing full out, and you're leading by example. There, that's inspiring to other people. They yeah. see that. And, yeah, uh, I, so. th- I think the fact that you, you, as a top earner, top you know leader, whatever, sitting in the front row taking notes is huge. Uh, well, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, if distributors do not what you tell them to do, they do what you do. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, watch the feet, not the lips. Yeah. You know, and leadership out there, you know, would you follow you? Right. Your work ethic, your discipline, your daily method of operation. You know, what are you doing consistently every day? Are you the type of person you would follow? Right. And, um, you know, so it's, uh, I mean, we could we could talk here for, for yeah. hours on this, uh, but uh, maybe we yeah. should wrap it up here. No, soon. no, I, that, that, you know, I want to go as long I as, as I can. I, as I, I, can have, possibly. I, have, I have company in town, <laughs> you understand. I'm, I how I'm a social director today. <laughs> I know, I know. I, know. So, uh, um, I want to talk about a couple more things about events. The one thing that, uh, that I heard, and I don't know if you think it's true or not, but a hundred, once you get a hundred people in your group at a major event, your business becomes self-sustaining. I mean, it just kind of takes on a life of its own. Um, have you seen any kind of like tipping point when it comes to people getting well, into events? You know, I, I don't. I wouldn't put a number on it personally. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say you know, hey, once you have a hundred people in an event, your your business is self-sustaining. You know, I've never focused on positions or numbers right, or ranks or any of that. I've always focused on the activity. Hmm. You know, the, Just the, the daily method of the, the activity, and you know, if you do the activity consistently, over and over, long enough, the results will will will, will happen. Right. You know, you'll achieve those positions. You'll build a business that'll be solid and have the residual income or self sustaining or whatever word you know that somebody wants to attach to it. But you know, the thing that I would go beyond. Even that is if you truly are out there building a business that you are putting that spotlight on others, that you are truly focusing on, like I said, meeting their needs, adding value to their lives and creating those raving fans and not measuring what you're getting in return, Mm -hmm. that you are truly out there. It's almost like the franchise business. If you've got a successful business model, then you want to franchise that out. It's almost like a poor man's franchise. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to invest thousands of, do- of dollars. You can start with very little investment and very little fixed cost and build a business with a little sweat equity that could start to grow. And if you can duplicate that over and over again with people, you know, whether it's in your, your local you know, area or whether if you expand it on a state level or a national level or an international level, that you could build something, you know, that truly could have that residual income. So, you know, it is. It's just been. Um, it's been a life changer, you know, for me. Uh, you know, we talked last night. Maybe we could close with this. You sure. know, one of the, the the defining moments. You know, you asked yeah, me, Jeff, was there some defining moments in your business? And you know, I think back when I was in my early twenties, and you know, my dad working for someone else and you know there was always more month and there was money and struggling and juggling and I'm the oldest of three boys and and um, it was really a, uh, a defining moment when he died at the age of 46 of a massive heart attack and I tell people that was the worst day of my life um, but I turned it into the best day of my life because it's not the meaning, or it's not it's not what happens, it's what you do with what happens. It's not the event, it's the meaning you give it. Mm-hmm. And I took that deepest pain in my life 
and used it to grow as a person and to serve. And there was some things there that shaped my life. Um, and one of my whys back then was, you know, not coming from a wealthy family and, you know, seeing my, my parents struggle. And I remember my mom driving us, you know, in a, you know, taking the boys somewhere and she had a car and it wasn't the nicest car. It was a little beat up and a little rust on it, but she was a proud woman. But I could tell there was some, you know, there was some pain there. And I remember as a kid sitting in the back of that car saying to myself, if someday, if I could, I would. If I could, I would like to help my mother and father. Or if I could, I would like to do this for my grandparents or for my family or for my charity or whatever your, if I could, I would. So I remember when I got introduced to this industry, I had a huge why. And part of the why was, was that if I could, I would. Of course I wanted to be able to get a home myself someday and you know have some of these sure. things that I dreamed of as a kid. But I remember going to work and working eight to fame, you know, putting in those twenty hour days, getting up early, working late, burning the midnight oil, putting that extra ten percent effort in that produced ninety percent of the work the, the results. And, you know, if you got the why in place, the how part's not that difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, come on, when you really get down to it, it's not that difficult how to yeah. build this. Yeah. Um, so that why was, you know, that I said to myself, if someday if I was ever in the position, I'd love to buy my mom a new car. Mm -hmm. And after a few years of working really hard, I was in that position. Mm -hmm. um, after investing back into my business, building it, 20-hour work days, just really going after it. And I'll never forget, it was on a Christmas morning. <clears throat> got the car outside. And I found out what the car of her dreams was. Of if she could have any car. And um, and I bought this car. I didn't buy my car, self a car first. This was for my mom first. Mm -hmm. So I buy her this car and I load it up. If you're going to shoot a king, kill him. I put all the, <laughs> all the bells and whistles in. I mean, I got her the insurance, the gas card, the whole deal. And she's up in the mountains. And I'm up there on Christmas morning. I got the car out in front of her home. And you know how it has that morning dew on the, the, the car? And I got a big red bow on, on the hood. And I'll never forget bringing her out. And that first thing in the morning, Christmas morning, she comes out and she sees the car. And I hand her the keys. And I tell her how much I love her. And I see these tears of joy running down my mother's face. Mm. And I thought I was the one that was giving. The floodgates were open. I was mm. the one that was receiving. Mm. And I just never forget, you know, being able to, to that, that why of being able to give that to my mom. And, mm. you know, I'm sure there's some moms out there. How many moms would like your son to do that for <laughs> you, right? You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's so funny because, you know, my mom, we've got a great relationship now. And, you know, we, we talk about, you know, the... You know, she says she was at a conference not too long ago, and I had like I don't know how many thousands of people were there, and she was in the front row, and I acknowledged her. And what a chance to be able to yeah. acknowledge your mom at a sure. convention like that! And and um, she said afterwards, she says, you know, Jeffrey, I wish you wouldn't tell that story. <laughs> you made us sound like we were so poor. <laughs> yeah, right. And she goes, and by the way, that car was quite a few years ago, and it's only a two wheel drive. <laughs> I said, okay, I get your point. And she goes, and by the way, you only have one mother. Yeah, I, I said, that. thank God, I can't afford two the way we're going. But now it's uh, we've been I've been able to do some great things there uh, with her. Yeah. And, you know, as far as um, you know, providing some and it, with, like you even asked me last night about different charities and sure. different things you can be involved in and different things you can do. It's just been very rewarding uh, beyond. You know, any financial success, you know, yes, do I believe that I'm, I'm on pace to be one of the first distributors to earn over $100 million? Sure. Absolutely. That is that is going to happen. I've got that, that, that but that is a measuring stick. Mm -hmm. Understand mm -hmm. that measuring stick is measuring the impact, the difference, yep. the lives you touch. You know, that that's what's very rewarding is the, the, the emotional and spiritual revenue. And, and so if you get your why in place, yeah. 
You know, and that was just maybe a story that maybe somebody could relate to. As sure, far as sure. Why to do the business? Here's what I would tell you. Uh, I know your mom's proud of you, um, and, and your time today is incredibly grateful. And I tell, I would tell you this: if your dad was alive today, he would be unbelievably proud of you. Not for the things that you've earned, but for your contribution in, in, wow. in the day to day and around the world, and what you've done for the people that are watching here right now. You're not invested in their business. Uh, this is a contribution back into the network marketing profession, and uh, we're all grateful for it. I want to thank you. Thank, thank you. Thanks, thanks for what saying. you're doing for everyone out there, yeah, too, by the way. We're, we're really, fun. really making a difference. Thanks, man. All right. Ladies thank and gentlemen, you. my wish for you, our wish for you, is that you decide to become a network marketing professional. You grow you. It's grow me, serve you, baby. Grow me, serve <laughs> you, uh, because it is a stone-cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day, and we will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.